M Mrs. Kravitz, I, I don't mean to be a busybody, but uh, what are you doing? I'm doing something I've always wanted to do. I'm deserting my husband. Just like that? In the middle of the night? Hmm? Yep. After 22 years of marriage, I've had it. Where are you going? Tonight to a hotel. Tomorrow to Mexico for a quickie divorce. <laughs> Sam, I'm exhausted. Turn out the lights and come to bed. Right this minute, sweetheart. As soon as I open the window for some fresh air. Sweetheart, come here and look. <sighs> come here and look at what? Mrs. Kravitz is outside in her night clothes trying to hitchhike. Mm -hmm. Come to bed. Doesn't that strike you as unusual? Not for Mrs. Kravitz. Besides, you shouldn't get involved. Oh, sweetheart, please. Look at her waiting out there. She looks so forlorn. Sweetheart, she's our neighbor. The, the least we can do is find out what her problem is, isn't it? No. Why not? I've learned from experience, when you set out to do the least you can do, you wind up doing the most you can do. You want to give me that once more? And try it in English. In two words, butt out. Sweetheart, you're a cruel heart. <laughs> Yoo-hoo, Mrs. Kravitz? Um, uh, Mrs. Kravitz, I don't mean to be a busybody, but, uh, what are you doing? I'm doing something I've always wanted to do. I'm deserting my husband. Just like that? In the middle of the night? Hmm? Yep. After 22 years of marriage, I've had it. Where are you going? Tonight to a hotel. Tomorrow to Mexico for a quickie divorce. <laughs> I wanted a phone for a taxi, but Abner wouldn't let me because he loves you and needs you. Because it's a toll call. <laughs> Sam, come on inside. You'll catch pneumonia. Uh, Mrs. Kravitz, wouldn't it be simpler if you spent the night in our guest room? Gee, I don't know. A strange things seem to happen over there. <laughs> well, you can always look at it as uh, any port in a storm. Yeah, that's true. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Sweetheart, uh, Mrs. Kravitz is going to spend the night with us. Wonderful. <laughs> Who am I, Jesse James? <laughs> Those cookies are for the rally. I'll eat now and go later. No, you can go with me now to Mrs. Stevens. What for? To return the cookie cutters. Oh, that's not a man's job. Okay. Do I have your word that you won't take any while I'm gone? It's yours. Now, Abner, a man shouldn't give his word lightly. A man's word should be his bond. You got my bonds, too. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Stevens! Oh, yes, Mrs. Kravitz. Here are your cookie cutters. Thank you. <laughs> Won't you come in for a minute? Oh, no, uh, Abner, um, my husband, Mr. Kravitz, uh, uh, he's waiting for me. Oh, fine. Thank you again. Oh, you're welcome. See you at the rally. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Stevens, 
Stevens, can I do it? <laughs> all right, Mother, what's all this about? How did you know I was behind this? I'm psychic. <laughs> it's really quite simple. I happen to notice this gentleman doing a rather exemplary job of directing traffic in Trafalgar Square. So I thought I'd surprise you with him. Well, I don't want you to think me ungrateful, but what am I going to do with him? Put him in the middle of the intersection, of course. He'd give a touch of divine elegance to a somewhat dreary little community. <laughs> what happens when he's removed from the state of suspended animation? <laughs> Oh, it should be glorious to behold. Take him back, Mother. Oh, Samantha. In London, he's just another pea in a pod, but here, he'd be the talk of morning glory circle. So will I, if you don't stop all this. Oh, Samantha, there must be some way I can be of help. I believe there is. At the rally. Oh. All right, Ducky. Back to Trafalgar Square. <laughs> What would a London Bobby be doing at Mrs. Stevens' house? Well, I've got to know it. Go ahead and look. Look! <laughs> Here, Gladys, have a cookie. You've been working too hard. <laughs> Now, that's what I call magic. <laughs> she opened the garage door. So what do you want me to do, applaud? No, no, she opened it. No hands, nothing. She just sat there. Well, why don't you stop? They probably got an electric door like they demonstrated down at the market. I don't believe it. She opens doors without electricity. Somebody ought to tell the electric company they're losing a bundle on her. I'm losing a bundle on you. I have to pay for a glass door. Eyeglasses, lessons in how to read would be cheaper. All right, go ahead and joke. I'm telling you she's strange. She's strange. You're strange. So prove it. Prove you're strange. Prove they've got an electric door. How? Go over and ask them. I will. Tonight, I'll go. Why do you have to wait until tonight? Because if I have to look like an idiot, I'd rather do it in the dark. <laughs> I don't know, Sam. This is so expensive. I can make do with my old rod and reel. You cannot make do with your old rod and reel. This is your vacation. You've earned it, you need it, and you deserve the best. I have spoken. Like a true and loving wife. Which, by an odd coincidence, I just happen to be. The best odd coincidence I ever heard of. <laughs> Somebody's timing leaves much to be desired. Much. Oh, hi, Miss Kravitz. Hello, Mr. Stevens. Uh, Come in. Uh, no, th no, thank you. I, I just stopped by for a second. I wanted to ask you about your door. Her door? Pretty nice. I've been thinking of getting one, too. Uh, you recommend it? Well, I know how she'd be without one. Wait a minute. Uh, I'm not talking about this door. I was talking about your garage door. Our garage door? Like I said, I'm thinking of getting one. And today, when my wife and I saw yours work... <laughs> ours work? Your electric door. Samantha! <laughs> Was our electric garage door working today, sweetheart? Only once. Well, only once? That's, that's what I'm afraid of. Some of these new gimmicks, they haven't got the kinks out of yet. Did you get yours from the guy at the market? Well, I forget. Which market did we get ours from, sweetheart? You mind if I have a look at it? A uh, look at it? Uh, well, uh, there's no point in looking at it tonight, Mr. Kravitz. Uh, it's so dark out, especially with it not working. Why don't you come back tomorrow night, Mr. Kravitz, and we'll give you a full demonstration. Yes, uh, thank you. <laughs> Darling, what are you going to do? Hmm? It's simple. 
I'll have to buy one new electric garage door and make do with one old rod and reel. <laughs> He wasn't a very good sport about that, was he? Maybe it was just a fluke. Let's see what happens when we tell the Kravitzes. Oh, please, come in. Go in. Uh, is your uh, wife home? Unexpected surprise. We came to bring you a bit of neighborhood gossip. We did not. We came to clear the air. About what? About who I am. Who are you? I am a witch. I don't believe you. <laughs> Honestly. I don't believe her. Uh, it's true. She's a witch. I thought you didn't believe her. I meant I didn't believe she'd ever admit it. I believed she was a witch from the second I met her. The problem is, you didn't believe me. I still don't. I don't believe all of you. Where is it? Where's what? The candid camera. I'm being embarrassed on coast-to-coast -coast television. <laughs> Mr. Kravitz, uh, there's no camera. Uh, unless you need one. <laughs> Did you see that? She conjured up a camera! <laughs> Really necessary. Well, you wanted me to convince him, didn't you? Just let us live. We're young and we want to live. If you must take one of us, take me. But, but, Mr. Kravitz, I'm not a bad witch. I'm a good witch. Her mother's a bad witch. <laughs> well, um, it's been nice chatting with you. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> well, sweetheart, how do you like it so far? Uh huh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Do you tell me I could be stuck here all that time? Impossible. What happened to Ho Ho Ho? Oh, my dear girl, you're a witch. Do something. Well, you, you see, uh, this was Esmeralda's doing, and, and no one else has any power over it. Now, if you sit down and relax, the spell will have a better chance of wearing off. We should leave them alone. Come on, sweetheart. You mean a wax pot never boils? <laughs> oh, I, I didn't mean that the way it sounded. It... <laughs> so, sweetheart, why don't you go upstairs and get ready for dinner? Uh, Tabitha and I'll give the baby his bath. Oh, uh, I'll get it. <laughs> Mrs. Kravitz, we're a little busy right now, so... I just wanted to remind you about the contest. Contest? For the best decorated house in the neighborhood. Don't you remember I talked to you about it a couple of weeks ago? Oh, yes. I'll talk to Mr. Stevens about it. Oh, there he is now. What's he doing, trying on his costume? <laughs> Nothing's happened so far, Samantha. May and I, I compliment you? Anyone who's gone to that much trouble just to please his children is certainly to be complimented. Uh, Mrs. Kravitz, uh, we were just about to sit down to dinner, so... I'm going. You know, that's the most convincing Santa suit I've ever seen. Real airman? What's that? Foam rubber? I beg your pardon. Mrs. Kravitz, you'll have to excuse us. Uh, wonderful. It's just wonderful. But how does he do that with his voice? He runs around in the snow and catches cold. Good night, Mrs. Kravitz. Good morning. Oh, hello. Excuse us for barging in. 
but we want to give the baby a present. In honor of being born. Oh, Mr. <laughs> and Mrs. Kravitz, you shouldn't have. You see, Gladys, just because they sent us an announcement didn't mean we had to. Oh, Abner, <laughs> stop kidding. He's just kidding. <laughs> yeah, well, come right on in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Darren, the Kravitz has brought Tabitha a present. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Kravitz, you shouldn't have. Oh, don't be silly. It was our pleasure. Oh, he's so pretty. Oh, he's so pretty. You oh, he's so pretty. Oh, he's so pretty. Oh, darling, you're getting prettier every day. Gladys, please, no baby talk. It upsets my stomach worse than her cooking. <laughs> Tell her about the gift, Gladys. Well, we got, in the baby's very own name, one share of stock in Kapoopsy Woolens. Oh, that's wonderful. Darren, isn't that wonderful? It certainly is. What's Kapoopsy Woolens? <laughs> it's not Kapoopsy, it's Poughkeepsie, as in the city of the same name. Poughkeepsie, New York. I thought you said Kapoopsie. I've been a stockholder in it for 20 years, and in those 20 years, the price of the stock never went down or up. That's what makes it a sound investment. Thank you. From both of us. From all three of us. <laughs> You're entirely welcome. We bought it through my cousin Julius. If you ever need a good stockbroker, I recommend him. Uh, his name is Cushman, uh, Julius Cushman. As a matter of fact, I just happen to have one of his cards. <laughs> one share of common stock. Stockholder's name, Tabitha Stevens. <laughs> well, Tabitha, you're a Wall Street tycoon. <laughs>